Hello everyone. So many doctors just love ciprofloxacin and they use it to treat pretty much anything. Urinary tract infections, pneumonia, skin and soft tissue infections, and they are especially prone to use it when they are not exactly sure what it is that they are treating. And how can you blame them? They probably remember from medical school or they read somewhere that ciprofloxacin is a broad spectrum antibiotic that covers gram-positive bacteria, gram-negative bacteria, atypical bacteria even. It has great pharmacokinetic properties, so it penetrates very well into the urinary tract, the lungs, even the bones. Its oral bioavailability is also great. What's not to like? Well, this is exactly the point. Since everyone has been using it for decades, things have changed and bacteria have become resistant. So nowadays, even for urinary tract infections that have been traditionally the main target for ciprofloxacin, this antibiotic is no longer reliable as it used to be in many countries in Europe and in North America, not to mention the rest of the world where the resistance rates are just crazy. So, if you are to use ciprofloxacin as empiric therapy for urinary tract infections, first you better check your local resistance rates and check your local guidelines. If you don't know your local resistance rates, empiric monotherapy with ciprofloxacin probably isn't the best idea, especially if your patient is severely ill, so septic, or if they have risk factors for antimicrobial resistance, like recent hospitalization, residence in nursing home, or recent exposure to antibiotics. So for these patients, you should either add another antibiotic as a backup while you are waiting for the results of urine culture and antimicrobial susceptibility, right? Or you should avoid ciprofloxacin altogether. Now, once you do know what pathogen you are dealing with and you know that it's susceptible to ciprofloxacin, then this drug becomes a great choice for the treatment of all sorts of urinary tract infections because again it penetrates very well into the kidneys the prostate the entire urinary tract so for directed treatment it's great but for empiric monotherapy it may not be the best choice depending on your local resistance rates and depending on your patient's risk factors for antimicrobial resistance for community acquired pneumonia it's definitely not the best because there are other more effective more narrow spectrum options to choose from, like amoxicillin and other beta-lactams with or without macrolides, usually clarithromycin or azithromycin. If you absolutely have to use fluoroquinolones, well, then use the so-called respiratory fluoroquinolones like levofloxacin and moxifloxacin that are much more effective against the pathogens that cause community-acquired pneumonia, first and foremost, pneumococcus. Now, you may have heard that ciprofloxacin is great for hospital-acquired pneumonia because it covers pseudomonas. Well, sometimes it covers pseudomonas. Sometimes, not always. Again, your local resistance rates are paramount. Because if community-acquired bacteria have already acquired resistance to ciprofloxacin, imagine what happened with hospital-acquired bacteria like pseudomonas and other gram-negative rods. So once again, it all depends on your local situation. For skin and soft tissue infections, forget about it. Ciprofloxacin is almost never the first choice. Just like with pneumonia, there are more narrow spectrum, safer, more effective options. Sometimes you may add ciprofloxacin to another antibiotic, but it definitely shouldn't be your first choice as empiric monotherapy. Not to mention that we are generally trying to move away from ciprofloxacin and other quinolones whenever it is possible because these drugs are notorious for their propensity to induce antimicrobial resistance, not just to fluoroquinolones but also other classes of antibiotics. They also have severe side effects. First and foremost, Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea. A devastating complication that affects mostly the elderly but it can affect pretty much anyone and many classes of antibiotics can cause this but fluoroquinolones including ciprofloxacin are at the very top in terms of the risk. Regarding other side effects you've probably heard of the prolongation of the QT interval and possible life-threatening arrhythmias, you've probably heard of tendinopathies including the Achilles tendon rupture, now, these side effects are fortunately rare, but the persons that are most at risk are older patients 
with multiple chronic diseases, people who take multiple medications that can interact with ciprofloxacin or, or otherwise increase the risk of complications. There are also neurologic side effects that are actually not that rare. Quinolones affect the central nervous system, so some patients can become disoriented, drowsy, they can even suffer from delirium, and once again, the ones that are most at risk are older patients with multiple chronic conditions. All in all, again, we are trying to move away from fluoroquinolones whenever possible. I know that all of these tips may seem a little bit random at first, and I know how confusing antibiotics can be. We simply don't learn enough about them in medical school. And this is why I'm preparing an online course for clinicians, for people like you and me, where I will teach the things that we actually need in practice. So if you use antibiotics frequently, but you feel that you need to learn more about them, this is for you. Once I'm done with this course, I will put the link in the description of every video. So don't forget to subscribe and you will know the minute that it's done. I promise you, this course will change the way you view and understand antibiotics. Thank you for watching. Good luck out there and take care.